when we push a toggle down, does the left wet side loosens? Yeah, it's the outboard wingtip that gets slack at the initially. Yeah, um, yeah, so if I'm turning right, it would be my left side that tends to get slack because I've got a higher angle of attack, which instantly gives me line tension on that side of the parachute. Yeah. It's actually trying to roll the other way, but there's so much drag associated with that toggle input that it retreats the wingtip in that higher airspeed on the outboard wingtip on the outside of the turn makes it rise. Um, it, but it's not quite enough. It cre creates an orientation change on the roll axis, but it's not necessarily tensioning your lines. Mm -hmm. uh, and so usually as you give a hard toggle turn without sufficient uh, roll axis change, you know, with, with harness input, um, the outboard wingtip can collapse, right? So I hit the right toggle, the left wingtip collapses. But that's usually a small and insignificant collapse. It doesn't cause anything bad. Mm -hmm. The risk is at the end of it. Right. So I give a hard toggle turn. Hi, Jessica. Right? So I give a hard toggle turn and then I let it off. That's where you get the more catastrophic collapses that can spin out on you. Right. So that's that's me reducing the angle of attack on, on in this case, the right side of my parachute, you know, after the turn where I've already shifted the load over in kind of an awkward way. And I've, you know, altered the yaw with respect to the relative wind. I like to call that a, a yaw axis angle of attack. Right. I've changed that relationship of, to the relative wind and then I let it off and the opposite occurs. So I go to a surge, but the surge also rotates on the yaw axis and that gets sketchy. That's the part where you can fold under half your wing, not just, you know, like one or two cells as you give a deep, hard toggle turn. Um, and so that's the one that I worry about is after these you know toggle monkeys that are only steering with their toggles. That last turn to final approach in severe turbulence, they can put themselves into a spinner. Um, and so once again, we know what the answer is. Get off the toggles, fly the harness as your primary and possibly rear riser will allow you to turn a little bit quicker or cut through it in a diving coordinated uh, turn using front, right, front risers and or harness. Right, that'll rip through it just fine. The one thing you shouldn't do is the one thing we are all taught to do as the means to turn our parachutes, the strings, <laughs> the individual brake lines. And it's just not appropriate for steering. It's just, uh, it, it can turn the parachute, but it's not the best way to turn the parachute. It's, uh, it's, it's about as crude as opening up the door of the aircraft to turn the aircraft. <laughs> maybe they teach students that way to use toggles to turn because when they first first start they're on such a light wing load and it's it's hard to turn with rears is, is that maybe why or um, i think that uh, that can be the case i mean i have taught people right from the beginning you got to hang them up but you taught them how to lean into the harness and how to you know lean on a rear riser in a way that's effective or your hand doesn't slip i mean you're not wrong at all but my experience is that we can actually train them the question is do they want to take the time? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, do they want to actually, you know, hang up each individual person to see if they're using the right way, you know, you know, giving the correct inputs or just say, pull on the right line, it turns to the right. It's how we've done it for 50 years. It's good enough, you know. Um, and as long as you don't put them up in turbulence, um, it's less of an issue. But keep in mind with that light wing loading, they're more likely to have a collapse or just, you know, a wink and a wiggle or whatever that's going to crap in them than, than we are, right? At the heavier wing loading above one three maybe or something like that, um, we're, we're loaded pretty well. And if we're flying in a nice smooth ma manner, those collapses really don't happen very much at all. Um, but watch a student canopy on an edgy day that's right at the wind limit for students. You know. If you wanted a really tight turn without having a big radius, you'd still use a toggle, right? I probably would, yep, but I would also be managing the balance of both toggles, right? So I wouldn't just do one alone. I might just go harness toggle, right? Initially harness toggle and then bump both brakes to tension all the lines in a more balanced way as I get the turn going. And that'll increase the horizontal component of lift, which will tighten the turn radius even further. So it accomplishes the goal that was that was wanted here, which was that that short turn radius. Um, yeah, but you're right. Yeah, to, there are times when using your toggles are the right thing. And I, I know that when I 
I talk about the evils of toggle turning. People sort of assume that that's all bad and you should never use your toggles. And all I, all I use now is the, is the harness. And then I go, wait a minute, hang on. I mean, what if you're in the pattern and the right maneuver is to apply brakes so that you float, you know, above that other person in the pattern or the, you know, the, the little manipulation that you need to do to fix uh, where you kind of caught a rotor as you're beginning your flare and you know the parachute is you're like half in a thermal or something dust devils you know turbulence off of another canopy you might need the power of your toggles to fix that problem harness may not be responsive enough on your parachute um so it's you have to kind of be comfortable with all of it in in my view know what to do when all right so um this was uh not my plan for the, the evening, but I decided to just spend a little bit of time here on Zoom talking about um, what I started about two years ago that many of you may not know about. Uh, so I was you know, kind of stuck in my house building parachutes, trying to figure out a way to teach people how to skydive um, without actually being out on the road. And so um, I discovered this thing called Mighty Networks, which is kind of like a mini Facebook, but it's private. Um, and only the, the members actually get to see the posts, only members get to participate in the live Zoom sessions, which I started off with one, and then there was more people, I added a second one, and then I've got three now, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, um, I do live sessions, and we talk about all kinds of stuff, you name it. Uh, and so the, the whole point, obviously, is for me to be able to reach out to, to all drop zones simultaneously, in theory, um, and we record every session, which means that if you don't like the way your hair looks, you might want to turn off your camera or at least let me know to like edit your face out of it or something. But it's not public that, uh, you know, so I don't put those videos on YouTube unless everybody's cool with it. Uh, and sometimes I will take uh, little sort of snippets that's just me talking uh, because I realize at the end of, a, uh, of a, a little section that this is something everybody needs to hear about. And, you know, I'm, I certainly have uh, my allegiance to the people that join the network. However, I kind of want to help help everybody, you know. So um, and so, you will see some of those on my YouTube channel. Um, but the, let me give you a little bit of a tour. So this is the Mighty Networks. So the only people that get to see this are folks that are, are members. That's why I figured this is kind of the best way to do it. Um, so we actually have a, a feed with you know things that people commented or you know some. You know, they like to post or something. We actually can communicate with, uh, with folks uh, directly. And you don't have to just talk to me. This is a network. The whole point is to have a community of people who are fascinated with skydiving. So this is the home, the landing page. Um, and uh, so we've got, you know, different articles that, that maybe I'll, you know, sort of flag it as, as super important. Everybody should. And, you know, you can certainly scroll down and see the, uh, the most recent posts. Um, you can also, so there's the discovery button, which um, has a, a sort of different view where you can see the members, the people that are sort of busiest on, on the network. There's quite a few of them that have been here for, you know, a couple of years, like every session, they don't, <laughs> they don't miss a week. Um, and so if you click on, for instance, live group sessions, um, you'll see all the, you know, the dates and the members help me out and sort of, you know, jot down the, uh, the topics sometimes, you know, especially really important topics. So this goes on and on and on. It dates way, way back. <laughs> and uh, and these, each of these sessions is minimum one hour. I mean, most of the time it's closer to an hour and a half. So we have all that stuff, but that's not all. So navigation and accuracy, there's a series of articles. There's also short videos. Often people would just send me a note within the Mighty Networks um, area and just say, hey, Brian, I have a question that, you know, maybe when you get around to it, you can talk about this topic. Um, and I'll just, you know, like this, I'll just talk to a webcam and, and tell the story uh, that they're wanting me to tell. Um, and that'll, again, be private only for the folks that join the network, improving your landings, flight maneuvers, Scott Avings uh, question and answer. That's a really wide open group, uh, uh, grouping of questions, hang harness applications, community conversations can be about whatever you want. Um, the head stuff, the mind game, I call that articles, lots of articles, parachute design stuff, because for those who don't know me, um, I've been designing parachutes for more than 25 years. 
Um, a lot of VR simulated skydives, teaching a variety of concepts, uh, jumping into a variety of virtual drop zones that are very realistic. <laughs> if you have seen some of those videos on YouTube, obviously I, I uh, spread the word on some, uh, some of that stuff already on uh, the open market. Ground launching. So you can see this sort of goes on and on and on. And then you have the events page. So we have a basic one that's Tuesday nights, seven o'clock, uh, which is uh, anybody, anybody that wants to come, uh, you know, th that that wants to talk about basic stuff is welcome. Um, however, the focus is deliberately on the fundamentals. Uh, we found that the group that's been coming around, you know, just every single <laughs> every th single Thursday night, uh, that was the first session. They um, you know, they, we, we have kind of evolved the conversation above, you know, the fundamentals and we come back around to those ideas. Sure. But we, we also get into much more complicated advanced ideas. So that's where I started the Tuesday night thing uh, just a few weeks ago. People seem to really like it. Um, and then we have a European time zone. So East coast of the U S at one thirty in the afternoon uh, is open for a lot of folks in Europe, not everybody. But at least this way you can you know do it after you can get home from work. Um, but I only do them in English. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, and then we have the Thursday night live, which is you know usually the biggest group. But I mean we're talking about yeah mostly like you know maybe ten people, eight to eight, eight or to eight to ten people. And don't forget, if you can't make it, that's fine because you can just click on the link. You know after I upload that video, um, and I'll often do edits where I add additional material to that to that discussion. And I think you'll find that uh, that alone, you know, if all you can do is, is just watch the, uh, these discussions. I mean, we think that we understand up to a certain point, and then we have this dark zone that we know we don't understand it. But when you have other people asking questions, you start to really illuminate the, the questions that you would have asked if you thought of them. <laughs> so that's what's so cool about this. Uh, I think you'll love it. So um, although I probably should be charging a buttload more for it, it's just 25 bucks a month. Um, and there's no limit on how many meetings you can come to. I mean, okay, there's only, you know, three a week, but still uh, that's 12 meetings a month, uh, you know, in, in, unless there's some unusual circumstance where I have to cancel that that's very rare. Um, I mean, if you come to one meeting a month, I think you'll find it's very, very worth it. If you just watch the videos, you'll still find that it's worth it. And if you feel like you need some more personal attention above and beyond what can happen in these discussions, that's fine because you can actually get in a higher level tier, uh, which is $69 uh, a month. And then you get all that stuff, but you also get a one-on-one -on -one with me. And yes, I should charge more than that, but whatever. <laughs> I just want to help everybody. And I understand there's lots of, of folks that don't have a whole lot of money. You're just you know scraping your nickels together uh, just to get on the loads. Um, and like I've said many times before, I want to help everybody. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, that you guys get a chance to to check this stuff out um, and uh, and join us on Mighty Networks. Um, I'll put an invite link at the bottom of this video after I'm I'm done being live. Um, but basically, I actually have to invite you, <laughs> uh, otherwise you can't uh, you can't join. So um, I think that. It's one of the best ideas I've had in a long time. I mean, it wasn't really my idea. I just sort of jumped on the bandwagon of this, this Mighty Networks movement um, so that I can help people become better skydivers, um, especially at the beginning of this sport. The first you know, couple hundred jumps is really overwhelming. I know, it's complicated. And we all get so immersed in free fall because it's cool, it's styling, it's stuff you can put on YouTube and look cool, but you know, it doesn't save your life. I mean, to a certain degree, pulling, okay, yeah, that sort of saves your life, but uh, it's a pretty straightforward thing. And free falls, uh, I mean, certainly hard to teach the finer points of it, no doubt. Um, but when you really get into the complexity of canopy flight, of navigation, and of flying in turbulence, and how to hit a target, how to hit a, you know, a, a field off the drop zone, that stuff requires a big story. And so that's why I, I uh, do what I do. And yes, I do a lot of free stuff, you know, well over 500 videos on YouTube. Um, so you can't say I haven't <laughs> put out enough, enough stuff to, to help just for the free market. But I also have, um, in addition to this Mighty Networks group thing, which I urge everybody to join, it really is a steal, no joking. 
Um, also, on adventurewisdom.com, you will find a lot of videos, and many people already know about that. Uh, that's something that Laura and I put together a long time ago, um, like 10 years or something, where we started putting together, first one was No Sweat, the Parachute Packing Made Easy video. Um, and then we added more and more and more, you know, sort of piling on, you know, you, you finish a series of videos, and go, okay, that was great, but what else do they need to know? You know, what else will my kids need to know when they grow up and start jumping? Because they're awfully close now already. <laughs> I mean, my boys are already, you know, Joshua is almost 13 years old. They're both flying parachutes and speed wings, you know, uh, in a ground launching sort of a situation and, and kiting. They fly it in, in the wind tunnel. They know how to cut away and dump their reserves. They know how to pull. So now what, you know, that's why I did this stuff, at least in part. Um, it was to, to sort of put together a library information, not just for my kids, obviously, but for all of you who are struggling to figure out the information with, you know, busy instructors, you know, I understand you want to, you know, nail them down, but they're running off to go do another tandem or another video, or they got some other student and they got to save their life. Uh, so I, I figured if I put together all these videos and the tests that go along with them on Adventure Wisdom, at least this way we can knock back, you know, the darkness a little bit. Um, and, and reduce the risks in this absolutely amazing sport. Nothing better, is there? So uh, I hope that, to see you all on, uh, on Mighty Networks at the Brian Germain Coaching uh, Network. And, uh, and please check us out on Adventure Wisdom. The books and videos will really be a game changer for you. All right. Well, thank you very, very much and have a wonderful evening.